We bring in the head coach right now of the Miami Hurricanes. Well, it's a pleasure to say hello to Mario Cristobal. You know, we consider him a, a friend up in Jacksonville. You know, Leon Cersei normally would be on the show to say hey to you. Where is uh, he? But he slipped out a Leon's little early. Leon's not going to travel. He's big time. You know that. <laughs> he is Mario. big time. Yeah. yeah. He is. How are you doing, coach? Doing well. Really, really good off season, a really good spring. Um, recruiting has been good to us. The portal has been good to us. And the retainment of the right guys has been really good for the program as well. So we feel progress and momentum, and we just want to get to work. Uh, one of the first things I ever heard when I began in this was the most you can learn about your team is from the first to the second game. What about as a coach? Can you make the same case that the most that you can learn about what's actually going on with the program is year one to year two? I don't know if you label that. I think that situation you know i think the the immediate situation of a team you could learn throughout the course of a season and i think you got to go through every chapter of it mm -hmm. you know the highs and the lows the difficult parts um guys that are playing and then maybe get beat out other guys that rise to the occasions guys that kind of it's it's the truest test of human character and nature right football and a football season so but we knew you know we're coming in the challenges that come with with what we needed to do at Miami. And it highlighted the areas that we were already were concerned about that had to be restructured and rebuilt. And you know what? You take it, you got to own it, and you move forward, and now you, you make it better. And it started with recruiting a top five class, a top 10 portal class. Uh, again, these guys that are here with me today, these guys are phenomenal leaders now. Mm -hmm. they're, they're tough asses. You know, they're really, really driven, motivated guys. And they'll hold you accountable now. They ain't going to let you slip if you're slipping. So competition at every position has upped the ownership and the team and the leadership. So we feel significant progress. And we just want to keep progressing. Yeah, I mean, that's it. The name of the game to get you. Like I posed the question to Tyler Van Dyke earlier. We're talking with head coach Mario Cristobal of the Canes. And I mentioned Hall of Famer Leon Searcy, old line mate of yours, and that he wants that standard. You want that standard. So this offseason compared to last year, how closer are you to the standard? Oh, well, we've made significant progress now. You know, I uh, somebody was kidding with me earlier. It's like, hey, you, you know, you guys have a top five recruiting class. I go, yeah, well, you're supposed to do that every single year. That's what we did when we played here. Yeah. And I said, wait a second. If they would have done that, I wouldn't be here right now. So, <laughs> it's, so, but that's what Miami should do now. You know, unfortunately, these guys just finished up prom and they're here now, and they're going to be rolled out of the stadium and they got to play, and and that's okay. You know, a baptism of fire like that and and getting thrown out there, it's okay. Let's mm -hmm. get them ready. Let's let them compete. Let's get our best competitors that we can trust on the field to make progress and go win. Yeah. Okay. Back when you played. Um, you know, health has always been such a concern, but I remember those amazing teams, whether it was Steve Walsh or whatever, you, you kept the quarterback healthy. And that was a big part of winning those huge football games. Um, Tyler just told us he's 100%. How did he look to you then? What, what do you feel about him now as we're on the cusp of camp? Well, you mentioned blocking and tackling is you can't win football games without being able to block and tackle. And we had a difficult time with that last year. Part of it, talent, the other part, injuries, the other part, just, you know, it was just difficult for some guys. So keeping Tyler healthy and upright is at the top of the yeah. priority list. And we feel that the offensive line has taken a massive step. Right. From a personnel standpoint, a regiment standpoint and culture standpoint. So. We're excited to surround him with a better supporting cast to allow him to function at a high level. Zion's healthy and the three transfers you brought in that offensive line. So I, I, is former offensive line, you know, former offensive line player. I got to imagine that you're just blown away by the possibility of what this group could do. Well, it's exciting because a year ago upon upon arrival that that and the defensive line were it was frightening, you know, when you're a coach. and Yeah, I remember you, you telling up, us, yeah. Yeah, it's like, all right, how are you going to block? How are you going to knock people back? How are you going to stop the run? How are you going to get to the quarterback? Uh, so there's been a ton of work that has gone into just solidifying and rebuilding those parts of the game while about the team while we rebuild the other parts as well. But the iron sharpens iron like mantra is a real thing now. You've got really good players, some young, that mm -hmm. are going against really good players and they're going to make each other better. So that helps a ton. Mario Cristobal, our guest, he's the head coach of the Miami Hurricanes. So two new coordinators in the second year. And I know that's not easy, uh, but you felt like you needed change. And what do you think these two guys bring to the table? Well, I think, number one, they're, they're great human beings, you know, elite human beings, great people, great father figures. 
great connectors and communicators. Second of all, Coach Dawson, his offenses, you know, traditionally ranked in the top 25. Lance Gitter, his defense is top five and number one, two or three in just about every category. These guys make a difference and they've done a lot with maybe not having the best personnel in their respective conferences. Good personnel, but not the best mm -hmm. uh, as it relates to the rest of the conference. And that's what we need. We need guys that can do a lot with what we have and be able to make it simple for our guys, but complicated for the opponent and, and do things that and do things that he can adapt to other things if they're not working. But things that suit our guys, that suit that suits our personnel. We're getting bigger and more powerful up front. We got to be able to pass the ball and protect the quarterback. We got to be able to get downhill in the run game. We got to be able to stop the run, knock him back. And there's a lot of good passers in this league. You better put them in bad down and distance situations to be able to pressure them, you know? And both these guys have the innate ability to be great play callers, but have great organizational skills and uh, game planning capabilities. Uh, with all the issues, particularly injuries that you went through, I, I got to imagine on the field, nothing bothered you more than the turnovers mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and drop mike you know that's yeah 100 percent. yeah uh, how do you how do you fix that coach you got to teach it better and then you got to play guys that won't turn it over that's the bottom line yeah it's got to mean that much more i mean let's call it what it is when you make something important you take care of it and you know, no matter, we can say we try, we did every drill in the book, but yeah. it's not good enough. And if it's not good enough, it falls both on the coaches and the players to do a better job. So we got to coach it better and we got to play it better. And if we ain't, play, we got to play somebody else. No divisions. You embracing that? You like that? The fact that it's just the two best? You know, I, I think it kind of all, it's a wash, right? It evens out at some point in time, if not now, later. So I think it's good. I, I think the thought, of divisions was great but then you think of the things that it may prevent also then you don't love that part so i, I we're good either way yeah well listen empanadas yeah yeah empanadas. just real quick um as we wrap things up uh, report out that jim harbaugh is going to be suspended for four games uh recruiting violations going back to the to the covid dead period so I still am in a gray area i know joe we were mm -hmm. talking about earlier it, how hard is it to try to figure out what you can do with the high school senior, what you can do with the transfer portal kid, how the NIL is involved. I, I got to imagine that this must be driving you crazy. How much time do you got? <laughs> <laughs> we have enough time. You keep it going. <laughs> it is. It's crazy. It's uh, it's hard to keep track of. And unfortunately, sometimes, um, you know, sometimes unknowingly guys do step and poop and there's yeah. a price to be paid. So, I, uh, you know. Man, what, what can you say? Just just work, get right back at it. Do everything you can to uh, stay compliant and stay within the rules. Uh, but it's, you know, it's difficult. There's a lot of things that change and there's a lot of things that sometimes don't make logical sense as it relates to the outside world, but you consciously forget that it relates to the NCA world and things happen. But the only other frustrator, not only, but having to re-recruit guys, and it seems like almost like an hour by hour basis. Yeah. That can't be easy. If you have to re-recruit them, you probably did it wrong okay. the whole way, or they probably just want to go no matter what. Yeah. So I, I still think the people aspect has to play a part in this, and I think we're all responsible. Don't recruit a guy lights out, and then when he gets on your campus, you ignore the guy. You know, just be real throughout the. Be passionate about recruiting. We recruit like maniacs. You know, but when they get there, the enthusiasm and the juice is the same. You know, if they have to be re-recruited. You left a window open and mm. somebody got in there and got in here. And if they did, maybe number one, they're young, so it's salvageable. Or maybe it was just not meant to be now. All right, tell Canes fans on the First Coast when they do head down to uh, check out a Hurricanes game, best empanadas. Where where, where can they go? Man, I, I could get in trouble by mentioning one, <laughs> not another. Just, you know where? Down in Miami. Down in yeah. Miami. Yeah. Good to see you, Mario. Great Thank you much. Thank you, guys.